Hello and welcome to It's my Joseph Barnett. Thank you very much for listening in. And as I say before all my podcasts, make sure you subscribe in the bottom right-hand corner as you're looking at the screen. Click the subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, I've got the moose with me today. Moose, how are you doing? All right. How are you doing? Good. Happy New Year. Yep. If you like. <laughs> how was uh, Christmas and New Year for you? Um, it's pretty quiet. Uh, same as everyone, really. Um, I tried to make it as normal as possible. Obviously, as you know, we've got a little girl. Yep. And my partner. My um, and we tried to make it as normal as possible for her. Um, and I think we succeeded. Um, we didn't have no telly on. We didn't watch <laughs> any news or anything like that over Christmas. Depressing. We kept Christmas. Depressing news. Um, and the only good thing about it is that we're not rushing around all different houses and making yeah. sure we see other family and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it was as normal as it possibly could be. It, it didn't affect me that much because I made sure that it, it it wouldn't. So, as I say, all news we didn't watch. Everything was just a, a big COVID restriction on everything. Yeah, no, I completely get that. And uh, with the sensationalism in the media, everyone would be beaten up by it, wouldn't they? And yeah. But... I've got to admit, uh, the vast, uh, well, the start of the podcast anyway, I wanted to clear up a few th- few things about um, the lockdown situation. Now, in no circumstances am I a COVID denier. I don't deny COVID-19. Uh, I believe 100% it exists. Um, for some reason, uh, I'm a, a correlating that with saying I don't agree with lockdowns makes you a conspiracy theorist. I don't understand, but... For the last nine months since this started, about nine months, uh, I contacted all of the universities, um, King's College, Brunel, um, the, uh, the the Central London College of Medicine, uh, and even the University of Hertfordshire, close to where I live, and asked to speak to a virologist, epidemiologist. Um, and, you know, I can't even speak to anyone on Zoom, most. No one will respond to me because... Still to this day, I don't understand the methodology of what's going on. And I think the reason that um, we're getting a lot of uh, people not abiding by this third lockdown that we're in is because everything is so inconsistent and nothing is being, um, uh, none of the information that's being given to us is clear. Now, I, I started to look through some of the figures. Uh, and, and and looked through some of the the the, the, the damage that this virus is doing on, on an overall front, yep. um, and how uh, the further lockdowns have shown not to work, um, and the j- damage to the economy, um, totaling that it will in fact kill p- more people in poverty than yeah. COVID ever will, and. Um, I, I, I just can't get my head around it while we're still in this situation. I I, I don't understand it, but I, I mean, I'm pretty fucked off of it. I really am now. Uh, I'm 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 losing faith in the system. Uh, of now, my daughter can't go back to school for uh, two weeks until it's looked upon again in a fortnight to see if it's safe enough to go back to school, mm. um, because of a new strain. Of the coronavirus, yes, this new strain and that's seventy-five percent more transmissible. But so in two weeks, we've got to learn whether she can go back to school or not. Which um, me and my partner work for the same company, yep. which makes it increasingly difficult to try and um, sort my daughter out for you know for someone to look after her or, or you know for her to be in a place where we can't be. Um, what was she do- what wanted to cover as well? Basically. Um, I'm going to get some figures up now okay. and I'm going to get them edited and to make sure they come over the screen so everyone watching this can actually see where we're coming from. Right. Um, because I can't speak to any professional people, can't speak to any professors, so I'll go off professors' data um, and what I'm seeing. But um, but just in general chit-chat, you're, uh, what was that thing that happened? Because I see it, because obviously Ellie's my niece and we're brothers, um, that they were in school and yeah. and they were singing a Christmas hymn so they're Christmas in Siam language because um, they can't. No. They're not allowed to shout or scream. Their, I don't understand. Their Christmas nativity this year was to learn three weeks before Christmas, jingle bells in sign, 
while they played the Jingle Bells song over a, uh, a speaker system and then they signed Jingle Bells uh, to it because obviously uh, behind the science of don't sing Jingle Bells and then you won't spread the coronavirus. So they had a group full of kids doing Jingle Bells uh, how is in that, sign how, language. I mean, any like general basic knowledge of a pathogen, I don't understand how that's being implemented and how silly this has got and I was listening to someone on um, LBC it was Sheila Fogarty um, and someone had called up and he was a guy that works at a supermarket and he said um, that uh, he hadn't kissed his wife since March <laughs> now it, that is laughable but this is what it's come to with this fear and this sensationalism and I'm not denying COVID as I said at the start I know people were dying but I want to get something on my phone, and now you to start see the um, the 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 thing that I'm talking about is going to come up on the screen now. Overall total so far, we've had forty seven thousand seven hundred and forty nine deaths. Okay, right. in the United Kingdom. So eighty years plus, we've had twenty twenty six thousand and five of the 47,749 have been 80 years, 25,000, 26,005 have been 80 plus. So uh, 770 of that 25,000 odd um, didn't have an underlying me medical condition. The rest of that number, mm -hmm. which was 25,235, yep. had an underlying illness. And then when you go on to uh, 60 to 79 years, you go into the total uh, total number of 18,146. 17,325 of them had an underlying illness. 821 didn't. And then when you go on to 40 to 59 years old, which is a 3,264 3, deaths, uh, um, 2,926 had underlying health issues, 338 didn't. And then when you go on to 20 to 39, 307 deaths, 263 had underlying health issues, 44 didn't. And then from zero to 19 years, it's 21 that had underlying medical conditions and six that didn't. Now, I, I don't want to like go through all the statistics and, 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 and like uh, I've just did there, but to me, I don't understand how with that data supplied that this could be a deadly virus. Now, people, uh, it's been portrayed in the me media that it is, and people are fucking scared for it. Scared to death mm -hmm. of leaving their house. They're scared to death to see their loved ones and live a normal life again. Um, and I, I'm getting sick and fucking tired of it, quite frankly, because this government needs to be held to account. And I'm not a vaccine denier. I'm not a COVID denier, as I keep saying. But what I'm saying is, is that I don't think this has been handled correctly. It quite clearly hasn't. When you look at the overall numbers now, and you've got qualified professors, uh, such as Carl Hennigan, uh, and I'll bring up his data, that, that said, um, this isn't right. What's going on? And then you look at the GDP and the damage that the economy is going to go into now. But no one realises no one fucking realises that the situation and shit this economy is in, we've got 11% drop in GDP. Yeah. Our overall GDP is going to drop by 11%. And there's been a Bristol University study, and I'll tell you who it was by. It was by a chap, Professor Philip Thomas, and he's the only professor that's done a, um, a, a study into the damage and the death that this will cause yeah. with the GDP drop. Because once your GDP drops, it creates That's mass poverty. Trouble. Then this virus will kill more people in poverty. Uh, in The lockdown will kill more people in poverty than this virus ever will. Mm. And this is what I don't understand. It's like an elephant in the room and they won't talk about it. And they've got a secret dossier, Theresa May went into a nice Boris Johnson. Why can't we see this information that the, yeah. this cost of the economy that this lockdown is causing? And he fucked up. And they won't show show us. They won't show us this data. Why? Why would they not show us? And, and, and again, another thing, you go on to it, and I see many NHS nurses um, going on social media. I know a few. Um, and they're, they're discussing the terrible time that they've had, and I'm not denying that they have. And the conspiracy theorists and how 
that that's insulting to what they're dealing with because they're dealing with it, the COVID deaths on the front line. And I completely agree with that. Um, and I admit the conspiracy theorists and the conspiracies, especially with this, is just evolved. And I think there's one end of the spectrum where, you know, there's microchips in the vaccine. There's this, there's this, there's this. Everything's a conspiracy theory. There's no talking to them people no. because everything <clears throat> is conspiracy. But as a nation, to make sure that we're following this virus and to try and understand the damage it's causing... Why aren't any of our news coverage, coverage uh, it, uh, covering hospitals and looking into the damage and the, the, the impact that this virus is having? Because I think if the public was to see that on national news, they would start to understand the damage that this is causing. I haven't seen one video, one clip. I've seen one from Paris and one from Italy at the very start in the first lockdown. I haven't seen any videos in our hospitals. No. Have you? No. I haven't seen one video <clears throat> of hospitals to show how overflowing they are, how mm. much nurses are suffering. And we, I think the public need to see it because if they see it, they will have more of a um, an understanding. It's very easy to cast this aside because you haven't got no association with it. And I think... I think the key is to this is that everyone needs to stop turning on each other and have a bit of empathy uh, for everyone's opinion. Uh, unless obviously it goes extreme, then, you know, you have no time. But I haven't seen anything. Now, <clears throat> here's my bit. You, everyone's probably aware of the story over the weekend uh, that Debbie Hicks was arrested at a home in Stroud after the 46-year-old walked around an outpatient ward in Gloucester Royal Hospital claiming that it was completely empty. Um, and she was saying, as she was filming it, this is why we're missing out on Christmas. I don't understand it. This hospital is empty. There's nobody there. The next day she was arrested um, because she took her mobile phone to a hospital. And to field, put it on social media. Which apparently you can't do. Okay. So Pick up social media after that. I can understand that. Now, looking into it, it says, uh, filming in the hospital. Filming by patients or staff or other patients filming in our hospitals by patients and, and their friends and families is not allowed without the express permission of a senior nurse in charge. Patients and staff may legitimately refuse to give this permission. This is to protect the privacy of the patients and staff. I totally understand it. So a head nurse has to give the permission to be able to film to their staff to say, you can film whatever. So how long ago? So March, mm. April, February time... <clears throat> when it was at the top of its peak, where everyone was fucking terrified, that senior nurse told everyone in that hospital to film up team fucking TikTok TikToks. videos, yep. to fucking go nuts and dance around. But a woman that wants to film a hospital because she thinks it's empty after she's been told that it's on its knees and they can't cope gets yeah. arrested. I think uh, I think that's a great point. I, um, Anyone with any common sense thinks that Anyone in them hospitals that were filming TikToks were saving lives and working to the bone. Um, yeah, with no PPE. With no PPE and think that um, they were they were fully... Um, yeah. uh, what, do you think they would be making TikToks? Wake okay. the fuck up. Now, I know in some urbanised environments like London, um, where we're from, uh, it's uh, more population, more viruses. Mm. So... It's you, uh, and then another thing that's damaging here is generalizing. Mm. You're looking to, as you say, Stroud, which is in the Cotswolds, it's going to be less urbanized. And what you're going to do is you're going to get some nurses that are in, you know, Essex and Harlow, which I know suffered immensely. They're going to look at that. They may have more COVID, but you need to look at it from an overall perspective. Um, and again, media coverage in hospitals yeah. would, would eliminate that. Let's eliminate that. Let, let's get um, more news coverage in hospitals to show us the damage that this is causing. And I think all of this conversation will never happen. I don't think it'll make a difference now. I really uh, well, don't. Well, it would for me most because no, I, 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 need, I, need, I need some evidence because you see a lot of people now have become divided by this. And yeah. They're saying, oh, there's, you're lying. The nurses are not lying. And, they're, um, and, and there's a fight going on. Yeah. And there's an opinion and, and friends are losing friends from it. And you could see it all over social media. You could even see it in the media. It's yeah. been politicized <laughs> now. Um, and I think that would be cleared up, cleared up if we get someone in there, but it doesn't seem to be happening. No. Why? 
No. Why doesn't it seem to be happening? And that is feeding the conspiracy theorists. That is feeding the people. Now, I've spoken to many people uh, in the in the NHS, and I uh, uh, and and again at certain hospitals that said they're empty, uh, that work there. Mm. Uh, I've spoken to others that said they're busy. Uh, now, again, just clear it up. Just 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 film it. Not not nurses doing it, but getting the news coverage in there. And, and you be back on the social media thing. And uh, there was a, a chap, and I picked up on this. His name's Cole Hennigan. Mm. And he is the director of evidence-based uh, medicine at Oxford University. He's the creme de la creme in his field, basically. Uh, and he published a study that was from Denmark. And... Uh, the the Danish, along with the UK, uh, are the sort of mavericks within COVID nineteen and the testing that they've been done. He showed a study on um, and put it on his Facebook to say that mask wearing actually doesn't work. No, and there's no actual scientific evidence to say that it does. Uh, this isn't some Tom Dick and Harry. This isn't a conspiracy theorist. This is a professor at Oxford University who is actually the top of his game in the field. And Facebook removed it. Facebook removed his post um, because they were saying that it was uh, incorrect. And that's what it's come to. I, I, I think that there's a narrative here. Um, and I think this thing is very organic and it's changed from the start. When they said masks didn't work, now masks do work. But for some reason, uh, if it's not supporting that we're being fucking locked up and we're not doing this and it questions that, then they don't want to hear it. No. And, and, I, uh, and I'm speaking, I, I'm speaking for the people that are stuck at home, mm. the, the people that have got mental health issues, the people that are suffering and are lonely. And that's, that's, that's the people I'm speaking for. And I'm, I'm, I'm fucking angry because these young, healthy people these just want to live a normal life. Yeah. They just want to live a normal life again and they're not being able to do it. And I think now it's for unfair reasons. I don't think it's right no. what they're doing. But then I can <clears throat> I can sort of understand why those there are so many conspiracy theorists around it because if you take COVID out of the equation and just look at what it's caused, which is huge mental health issues, huge unemployment, which then... Equals to mental health issues. Well, uh, sorry to uh, carry on there. Sorry, because I picked up and it would go perfect with that. I picked up on a study with mental health that's actually recently been done by a professor. Go on. And it's by Alex uh, Kwong. Uh, and it was a, it's a new study at Bristol University um, to show that basically mental health issues have doubled. Yeah. They've doubled. And that's a, a that, that's a study that's been done. And yet not one study done on what sort of um, effect mental health has on a child when yeah. they've spent the last six months off of school. Yeah. And now God knows how much longer they're going to have off school with not being told not to contact, don't hug relatives, don't go around Nan's house, don't speak to your friends, hum a, hum a Christmas tune, don't speak with your mouth open, don't sing happy birthday to your friends on their birthday. It's, it's only damage. little things, but it has an effect. We're then being told... Don't trust your neighbours. If you see four people going around there, give us a call. Yeah. I've known that neighbour for 20 years. Grass that fucker up. Um, don't do this. If you can ever imagine a country more divided, it's mm. now. And you need to look at the implementations that's creating that. And again, social media is a um, a pit yeah. for these things. Cess pit. Um, and you see memes, and I see a meme uh, on social media, and what it was was, don't blame Boris, blame this. Mm. And it was the guy protesting outside with a face mask on outside in the street protesting his rights mm. and and these people don't realize what they're doing and they'll b shoot themselves in the foot i tell you because if you don't want to have the right to protest this and lockdown right on what's going on yeah then you need you yeah you need your brains testing because all and the data is there and if the government's got a secret dossier that they're not giving us the figures, and again, it's the same situation as the, and the NHS. If they showed us the damage yeah. um, that's saying, look, these are the figures here. We're asking for the figures of what lockdown's causing and what what 
down the line damage is going to do in regards to poverty and killing people if they showed us no hold on we, it's not going to do that these are the figures these are the studies mm. that would put me in line and i would hold my hands up and say i'm wrong i'll yeah. hold my hands up even though the depressors come out there and they showed us the studies that have gone into it and said what we're doing is re it isn't going to cause more deaths down the line, isn't going to cause poverty, isn't going to uh, cause mass damage, or we're going to end up saving more lives by doing what we're doing now. And, yep. and, 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 and you go back to the, the vested interests that the government have got. Uh, Matt Hancock, the, the fake crier, I don't know whether you've ever seen, did you see him try? Uh, I mean, you couldn't, uh, you know, when you look at someone and you completely tell that they're 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 the most disingenuous person uh, by by trying to fake a tear. Yeah, that is him in a nutshell. He is so fake uh, and unrelatable. A typical politician. Yeah. Um, and his old buddy that was a pub landlord. Yeah. That then turned into a PPE uh, yeah. maker, had a million pound fucking contract. What's going on? Well, that's the thing. Is that. Me personally, and I'm not speaking for anybody else, is that I'm sure there are a lot of people like me that will sit there and go, right, this isn't, this is more than COVID. This is more than um, a pandemic, as as far as I said to you just after Christmas when we spoke on the phone, that um, a week before Christmas, um, I watched a breakfast television program, which they had a, doc they had a doctor on, and they were taking questions for general public. And one of the questions from the general public was, um, I want Christmas dinner with my family. I've had a COVID test. My brother's had a COVID test. My wife's had a COVID test. And her brother's had a COVID test. All come back negative. Can they come round to my house for Christmas dinner? And the answer was no. Because the answer was no because uh, the test that you can go and get at Boots, which are 100 and something pound, 130, 140 pound, are only 75% positive. Are only 75% accurate, sorry. Yeah. So then... You sit back and then you go, well, if they're only 75% accurate and they don't mean anything, then why am I allowed to go and fucking buy one? Yeah. Why am I allowed to go and buy one if I can't be near my family? The whole point of having a test so you're not yeah. positive is that I'm exactly. okay. I've been tested. I can exactly. go and see them. But it still doesn't make a difference. I mean, you look at Boris Johnson and um, as they were trying to implement the mass testing, that I'll get onto that after, um, that he said, do the track and trace app uh, as well, you know, do the, tra and he, he, he was around someone um, that had COVID-19 the second time, obviously he'd, he'd contracted COVID-19 and went to hospital. And I think it was about three months ago, he had COVID uh, and he said he, uh, uh, he'd been in uh, contact and he got the track and trace app to say he needs to be locked down. Yeah. So obviously he's, he, he sat in on, on uh, questions uh, um, in parliament in the House Commons um, from home on Zoom or, or whatever. And uh, it's just, uh, I looked at it and you just think, what complete and utter bollocks. Mm. There's been one case, one case in the world of someone contracting coronavirus twice. Yeah. One, one case. And you can pretty much tell that that probably was bollocks anyway. And he would have got tested as well. So he wasn't politicizing it. He wasn't trying to bum up the track and trace app by, by sticking to that. I mean, this is the type of people we're dealing with. And anyone that thinks that the government is there and they're there to provide us with law, uh, provide us with legislation in order to live a normal life. But I'm sorry. It's got to a situation now where I believe they're letting us down. And I'll get on to the second point, which was mass testing. And the way that they were incrementally changing it after the first lockdown and putting the mass testing into local authorities yeah. and say, OK, we're going to go, we're going to look at England nationally. And the areas that are, uh, uh, are more severe than others, we're going to lock them down. We're going to introduce mass testing into them boroughs. Uh, we're going to isolate them people. And then we're going to introduce the testing like the other nations done. Yeah. Like Singapore. Uh, although they have less, uh, far less po uh, population, and it's it's a lot more difficult to uh, easier to isolate. I'm not saying that, but Japan done the same thing, and now they're successful, and they've they've overturned it. Yeah, 
it's all gone now. They're not having any issues there. No. China is a totalitarian state. They can't be um, judged on that. They were locking people up. Yeah, and and, really. and uh, well, China's another issue, and that, that can go on. But in our own um, nation dealing with COVID-19, mass testing is the reason, is the reason that uh, failed mass testing is the reason that we keep being locked up because they didn't isolate the virus. They didn't introduce the mass testing and it failed. That's the reason. That's the reason. And it, it, it seems that one minute they're doing, everything's so reactive. Nothing's proactive. Every, and this is why I believe that um, these these lockdowns are just a reactive, um, uh, just to, to the virus, a reactive formation. Then they're, they're not trying to proactively deal with it. That's why I don't think they're looking into the economical point of view. And you know, I'm not some, I'm I'm not an expert, but if I had the data provided to me, I would be, I would hold my hands up. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. No, but you can I'm, ask questions. I can ask questions of my government. Which makes you a conspiracy theorist. Exactly. You question the narrative and you're a conspiracy theorist now. You're you're tarred with person that's uh wants a microchip in their forearm or something. Mm. It is how ridiculous it's got. But again, that's how conspiracy theorists was designed. Yeah. They designed the light. It was done by the American government during the Kennedy assassination. But don't get me wrong. Uh, going back to a conspiracy, I don't think it's a conspiracy theory to say, oh, everyone's going, let's wait for the vaccines. Let's get these vaccines in. Come on, give us them vaccines. And then we, it's our first step back to normal. But why shouldn't you sit back and question and go, well, a vaccine normally takes 12 to 13, maybe 14 years to come up with a vaccine. And we've developed it in 13 months. Mm. How do we know that's safe to take? That's not that's not a conspiracy theory. That's a question. That's a question. And I must admit that I certainly had... Um I was, uh, I was a bit concerned by it because you started to see, and then they said pregnant women can't take it. Now they're saying people with allergic reactions yeah. can't take it. Well, they didn't say that before. No, they didn't. They said it once people started getting vaccinated, and this is the problem that you're going to have when trying to roll out a vaccine. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying, you know, I've had my yellow fever. I've been around Africa. I've had my yellow fever vaccination. I've had uh, hepatitis, diphtheria, the lot. I, I, I've been vaccinated. Um, and... Uh, but rolling out a vaccine after a year, when you look at it, 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 can, it is worrying. But again, um, you know, you have to rely on the experts and things like that. Of course you do. But there have been, um, God, there have been so many uh, to mention in the past where people have been getting injections uh, of, of vaccines and then look at the terrible fucking health ramifications mm. that have led off the back of that well, because it come too quickly. Well, you don't know. It could be... Again, surmising, and I'm not an ex. Yeah, I'm not an it's ex. It's just a question. It's not an expertise. I wish someone would fucking respond to me and talk to me about it. It'd be fantastic if we could get an expert in. But again, it's many different experts talking about many different things. Uh, an epidemiologist, virologist could cover that um, also. Um, but yeah, definitely had concerns with it. Um, and and you'd only be a human being to have a concern. Um, but I mean. Would you did? Would you have it? No, 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 no. I wouldn't. Why? Um, because I want to see how many people get ill from it first. Um, it's true, though. There's isn't already it? been it's five true. cases of people that had it that got Bell's palsy within 48 hours. Bell's palsy numbs one side of your face. That fact. That's a fact because I saw a bloke talking about it on the news. It's the news, but. There was, they were talking to a guy there and he said it, it went after a day and that's when they looked into it further and then they said, oh, it was an allergic, uh, allergic reaction with um, an infection that already he had in his nasal passage that then brought on a Bell's palsy and then they were like, well, let's look at this. It might have to do. But again, that to me is not good enough because I wasn't told about it beforehand. I was told after people suffered from it. that Oh, no, you, if you've got any allergic reaction, allergic, what does that mean? I get hay fever. Does that mean I can have it? Does that mean I can't? It's not enough just by saying allergic reaction. I know it sounds stupid, but I've not been... It just said, if you, if you suffer any allergies, best not have it. What's that? Mm. Allergies to what? Peanuts? It doesn't make sense. It's the same as... I'll, I'll tell you a bullshit story that never happened. This story never happened, right? This is a, a made-up story. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. This is not true. We, I, I told you, I knew someone that got um, a test through the post, opened it, didn't touch it, sent it back, and then they said that you tested positive, and they didn't touch that whatsoever. Now, for that one person, 
that's got that. And went, I've never even bloody done anything to it. And now they're telling me that I've tested positive for COVID. That person's then going to go, well, that's it. That's it yeah. for that person. This is all bullshit. Yeah. This is absolute yeah. bollocks. It is, yeah. Because you're right. It's what you're saying is there's not enough answers for no. questions. I've been told that my daughter can't go to school. Yeah. But then two miles down the road, there's another school that's opened. But I know people in my area are going to that other fucking school. Yeah. So uh, where's the science behind that stupid yeah, I th fucking I th situation? I think the education system um, is is so mixed up and complexed at the moment. I feel sorry for sort of head teachers and oh, of course because they're only told to do what by yeah, a poxy yeah, government. Yeah. And 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 you know it is very important, but. And then you look at the way the virus spreads in education settings. You can get a graph up now, actually, because... Uh, boom. Boom. Graph. Um, that'd be good if you edited that. I don't know that's going to come out, but yeah. it'd be a graph. Lightning come out of my fingers. <laughs> graph. <laughs> um, uh, but it says in education settings, that's where COVID spreads. Mm. Uh, and don't... And uh, the, it's to, I think it's 25%, 20% of education settings uh is where the virus spreaded uh and um i know that i was uh because i'm an engineer and uh i was uh speaking to uh, university professors at middlesex in um, effluent testing to try and pick up uh, covid19 a non, a non uh, contagion form of uh, covid in effluents in sewer system in sewer system before uh, the actual spread and now you're seeing them test that being undertaken around the world um, it's quite modern um, you heard it here first but uh, but then is that is that warranted for something that's got such a low such a low death rate in regard to people of certain ages that don't I have think it? I think you look at it right now the implementations that they've done um, for the first lockdown I completely agreed yeah, with yeah. because they had to do it At the end of the day they're saving lives yeah um, and the way to do it and the way they've been told is to to save lives and you look at it from an economical standpoint well you know we've got no they, they had to do that yeah, yeah, the yeah. economy probably could be okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we could suffer it we've got a furloughing system okay the cut we're gonna we're gonna struggle we're gonna struggle if we do this four month lockdown yeah. or however long it was about four months wasn't it mm. we've got to struggle we've done that lockdown okay our economy is going to go into a recession um, because everything's shut down but we will be okay we'll manage that the the the, the self-esteem is okay we still we still have fire um and we'll manage to rebuild but now it's come to a point yeah. where basically they've crippled it all the way along anyway for the hospitality industry yeah. the arts uh the the people that work in the health industry have been absolutely um basically fucked up the ass <laughs> and you look at the statistics and i'll get it up now that the gyms um in in gyms around the nation and there was a study done uh, by fitness industry and it was 1,000 and again it's off the top of my head I've got it in my notes um, and they tested 1,400 gyms around the United Kingdom uh, and they found one case of COVID-19 spreading through gyms G it doesn't spread in gyms no there's no data to prove that it spreads in gyms now I don't understand and our health minister is a disgrace he needs to be sacked immediately because there's no proof there's no data to say it spreads in any gym environment or anyone that wants to train and the studies are there to prove that 30 percent increase um uh, uh, exercise improves your mental health and it, it alleviates depression there's like 30 or 40 percent uh, how much it helps people it gives people it gives me um uh, I, I i love training um, and I and I can speak for all of them people, uh, and how they've continued to lock them up, and, and and not allow people to do exercise when there's no data to prove that it spreads in gyms. How is that? Mm. How is how is that right? I don't understand. And then you've got the the restaurant industry, hospitality industry, um, but there is data to prove that it did spread there. Uh, but again, where's the data to say it's spreading uh, nursery and primary schools? 
because it must do because they've shut them down education in settings that's that's uh, I, i've read the data on that and i t that would have been in a graph that we uh, that i'm initially talking about and it, i would have sh sh shazammed it in um but uh, that the education settings are the big spreader of covid um, and that's from public health data yeah but again it's from it's from data issues of where in the beginning when we was all terrified and everyone was because it was like shit what's going on and then over the weeks, it was like, oh, no, we got these numbers wrong. Oh, no, we forgot to take care home numbers in. Let's wait them in there. No, oh. that needs to come down a little bit. So over a certain time, I just went, I'm not going to fucking look anymore because no. they're changing and changing and changing and changing. And again, it's that little thing that you just makes you go, what else is going on here? Because yeah. there's no way with every single government um, advisor would tell them to do this so badly. To make to to say to someone uh, to say on television and say to the whole nation, if you've lost your job after forty years, go and retrain into something else. Yeah. Just do it. Just go and do it because we've yeah. said you can go and do it. Let's take away everything that you, it, you know, it, for. It, it, it's it's as well um, the same as the, the arts and stuff like that. Things that you do now appreciate more that helped your mental health, yeah. um, that kept you away Same. from the shit. That Same. We're, yeah, 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 exactly. Because yeah. now we are the lowest we'll ever be, yeah. ever. You'll never see anything like this again. And well, it, well, we're putting touch with. well, we're, we're, we're not tackling China, so I don't know, it could but happen. Let's say, let's say I'm a conspiracy theorist and I'm, I, uh, I'll put my tin file out on. If there was anything underlining here, surely now in the, in, in the mindset of every single person in this country, now would be the time to implement whatever you wanted to implement because we're fucked. We we don't we are fighting ourselves because mm. you've you've got people punching people on trains because they're not wearing masks and people shouting at people in supermarkets because mm. they haven't got a mask on. Um, that's we're fighting ourselves. But in the same as everything that that's implemented by a government that people know isn't right, there will always be that small rebellion group. That rise up, and then rather than that rebellion group being called a rebellion group, they're just called conspiracy theorists, and say so you're, you're talking shit. It does shut up. It, you're very true, but it does. It, there's there's ends of the spectrum on there. Now, I'm not saying the government it wants to do us. No, harm. I'm not saying that. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you're saying that. But I was leading on to yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. going to say. Um, and I'm not saying I'm questioning the lockdowns, and I'm a lockdown skeptic. Skeptic. Um, and I have huge skepticism about lockdowns, uh, but on conspiracy theorists and, 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 and the mask wearing and stuff like that, you've got people that, like me, I actually went into London and I forgot my mask. I forgot it. Um, and I went to Tottenham Howe <laughs> looking for a mask at the front and I couldn't find one. When I thought, well, I ain't going back. I had a date. So, um, uh, I, I spread COVID all the way through. No, I didn't. But I went there, but I was getting looks. And was it I, like I, I, I was, invasion of the body snatchers? Yeah. yeah. I, I, had, I, I had anxiety. And it was right when, after we come out of the first lockdown. And I was like, shit. Uh, and I, people were watching me. Um, and uh, and uh, I genuinely, I'm, a, I, like, I, I'm, I'm abiding by the rules, by the way. I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, I don't want to wear a mask. I'm not wearing a mask because thing just for the state of other people and respect for other people and respect for the law i will wear a mask it's not going to do me no problem but uh, what i was saying is is that you got to get conspiracy theorists yeah, sure. that go i'm not wearing a mask i'm not doing that i'm not doing this in supermarkets and that. yeah, that's wrong the other day that's wrong yeah that, that's wrong what you need to do rather than start being a um, um start believing everything is a conspiracy theorist you start to do um um, serious research yeah. and start trying to speak to people do a podcast do something um where you can get your um voice heard um don't go down a rabbit hole no. just start to look at it, things and when you look at things and start to do your own um you get your own perspective of how things are planning out and and, and to me and i'll speak to experts until I'm blue in the face, and hopefully um, we can get someone ASAP. That would be fantastic to speak to someone um, and and uh, clear the things up because I'd love to. I have don't a think chat. you would. I don't. I don't think anyone would come well, on gonna, for fear of their job or. Yeah, I, I mean, hopefully we might be able to get an ex professor. Yeah, oh, well, ex. It was always a professor, but um, someone who, who used to work in un in a university or um, an, an expert in the field, and uh, hopefully we can we can speak about that 
um, and hopefully can clear up uh, clear things up from an educational perspective. Um, but yeah, things are crazy, aren't they? Yeah, things are really crazy, and it's really uh, uh, and. I, I was speaking to George Galloway about it before on the previous show. And uh, even politically, everyone's so divided now. And it's got to a point where you would hate someone just for having a different opinion to you uh, in regards to COVID-19, just say respects, or in yeah. regards to politics or Brexit. or And if you have a different opinion to someone else... Um, then they automatically hate you. There's no, Absolutely. there's no common ground no more. There's no debate. There's no. no where we can discuss it normally. And I think this virus has just shown how more people are more divided and more hatred and more. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's like with with a true conspiracy theorist, and I'm not talking about someone that asks questions. A true one that would say aliens exist, and you turn around and go, oh, "I don't think they do," and they go, "Well, you're a fucking idiot because it's true." <laughs> yeah. It's the same as the the COVID deniers that are walking around London shouting at the old Bill, "Choose her side, choose her side." They've got nothing to do with it, and they're no. they're, they're employed there to stop you smashing up and defacing war memorials. You fucking idiots. They'd take a knee for BLM though, wouldn't they? Exactly, and 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 it's. It is those conspiracy theorists that go now. I'm going to go and march through London. I'm going to go and shout Nazi at the police that have been there because I know they know that they're going to end up spraying racist on a Winston Churchill memorial or, or smashing something up. If you're going to go in there and protest, protest that you don't want to wear a mask. I don't want to wear a mask. Of course I don't. It's a pain in the ass. But it ain't fucking. A t and they ain't telling me to wear a t-shirt saying Jimmy Savile's great on it. It's mm. a mask that you wear mm. for ten minutes to go shopping and you take it off. Mm. That's the rules. Them's the rules. Mm. Sometimes you've got to eat shit and like the taste of it. If they don't, well, they don't that's the way it works. But mm. to go and march through London at your own free time to say, I don't want to wear a mask is a bit fucking stupid. <sighs> I don't get it. I don't know. I think everyone has their right to protest. But when you it's sensitive because you, you're in um, the midst of a virus and the it could potentially spread. But no. th there's no data. There's no to data, to, but there's no data to prove it spreads outside. And and you just look at BLM. Well, when they were protesting, yeah. where was the virus spreading through that? Yeah. It didn't happen. But it, happened, didn't correlated, no it correlated when the schools started opening up again. And conveniently enough, COVID started spreading. We come out of lockdown the third one, didn't we? And everything started happening, but yeah. schools went back yeah. and it all kicked off again. And then, again. I mean, I'm not... It's... And again, it's not easy. It's complex, and we're coming from it as laymen's uh, to a certain extent. And it's not easy for the government. I'm not saying it is, I, but uh, I think with lockdowns, I disagree. I, I, I think then. it should be as cut and shut from a government. I I've never voted. I've never had any faith in the government ever. It's mm. like I have conversations with people going, "The government are lying to us," and it's like, "Yeah, th this isn't no. This isn't no." Mm. I I. Again, it's questions that I want answered of say, right, everyone's allowed to go on a BLM. I'm using BLM as an example. I've got no problem with BLM whatsoever. You do what you want to do. You want to protest about what you want to protest about. But I've, if got, I've got a problem no, with BLM. Okay, okay. But but I'll if, tell you If after. you're going to let them go and I protest, know what you were saying. Go on. You're going to go and let them protest. Mm. That's fine. Okay, it comes back. All went to shit. And, and what started out as St. Legitimate was fucking hitched to a horse that had been smacked off the arse and it went berserk. Now... That happened and everyone was like, well, okay, they can all walk the streets. No one caught COVID, blah, 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 blah. But now they're saying, right, no one's allowed out New Year's Eve, right? Yeah. You're not allowed out New Year's Eve. You've got to sit home and watch thousands and thousands of pounds of us fucking spunking fireworks into the air, taxpayers' money. Yeah. But we're not allowed to go and see it. So they're, they're spending my money in fucking drone shows of um, of racist political uh, part of uh, Black Panther bloody uh, signs of Black Power signs in the mm, sky, mm. and I'm not allowed out to go and see it. Mm. Again, it's not a conspiracy theory. I want answers from my government mm. to say why on earth, what, what's going on? I didn't, I didn't ask to pay for them fireworks. You said we're not allowed in London, mm. so why am I watching thousands of pounds burst in the air? And we're we're fucked as an economy and a I, country. I think it's a very interesting point, and the. The, the fist, the rising fist yeah. of the Black Power movement um, is an inflammatory movement. It's 
uh, has racist tendencies. It's not BLM. No, it's nothing to do with it. Um, but it's come to a point now, and I addressed it with George Galloway, that uh, it, we just take example for our Premier League footballers who are taking a knee for BLM. And it's got to a point now where you look at the movement and what they're calling for, very anti-Semitic, uh, that they've come out on Twitter. Um, and the, the movement in now are creating a political party. Um, and one of the main aspects of the party, and um, one of their main things on the manifesto, so to speak, uh, was defunding the police. Mm. And it just shows you what society we're living in. When the mainstream, because it's to do with the an ethnic minority movement and they don't want to offend anyone. They won't question it. Even if it's right or wrong and there'll be an elephant in the room to say, well, hold on, putting a firework in the sky, it may be only be a firework. Don't matter about it. Don't worry. No. But you're representing a movement that's racist. Mm. And when, when, and I've, ha I've noticed it and, what it's doing is these uh, movements, especially BNM, are a Marxist movement. They're not helping black people. They're not. They're not. They're just creating more, more tension. Um, and I, I, I would, I would hope that the the, the 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 black people would agree with me on that because I think they are. Uh, and to call into defund the police, and I think that the terrible racist attack what happened to that bloke in America in the knee on the head was disgusting. But it happened in another country. It happened in another country. It has no relation to us and and how it's evolved to that. And they're not even doing it in America anymore. But yet, we st what, 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 what society are we living in when to say that the, uh, an organisation that's called to defund the police? Yeah. You know, what do you want? Anarchy on the streets and, and they're taking a knee... For that movement, yeah, and 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 that's mainstream. I think is is it though that we're getting older, and that's just the way of the world now. For anyone that was a fan of Vicar of Dibley over Christmas to tune in and watch Dawn French come out and and start talking about uh, the Black Lives Matter movement because it's what God would have wanted, and it's like I don't tune in to watch. She do that, yeah. What uh, they they put a big BLM thing in a Christmas special of Vicar of Dibley, and everyone went, "Whoa, I don't believe it." I expected it to tune in to be funny. Well, you shouldn't be watching Vicar of Dibley. <laughs> I didn't find it funny anyway. Um, but, but yeah, it was political messages now. At the same it, as everything's politicised, and I just think Britain's got talent. Well, you got no. four untalented cunts sitting behind a chair. Excuse my French. Um, and then sending out a political message to say, look, we should all care about this. Don't tell me what I need to care about. I either care about it or I don't. But I don't want to be told I should be on a poxy reality show by a bunch of dancers that won it five years previous. Look, I, I think that um, all we want is what's fair and everyone to be treated equally. And there are racists and there are um, black people that have suffered Ethnic minorities have suffered in this country. There's no doubt. There's been terrible racism but issues. That firework doesn't know. That doesn't know. There's more. been terrible racism issues, and whenever it happens, it needs to be eradicated. And there needs to be positive movements that are not negative to try and help it. And BLM is not that movement. No. And again, I've sent countless messages to BLM to try and get them on. It, lucky enough, we had Extinction Rebellion on the first show. Um, BLM would be great. Yeah. That would be great because they would help me. Understand it a bit understand, more. Understand, uh, and you know, I'm a, as a, as a white person, you know, and, uh, and they could help me understand more what they're dealing with, and then we could have a a debate, a, uh, 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 and and discuss it. That would be a fantastic show, and hopefully, fingers crossed, they respond to my latest uh, the latest message that I sent, um, because I think that would be fantastic to to speak to them and, and where they're going, because they are they are starting a a party. I don't agree with the movement, and uh, no. I think it's inflammatory. But uh, they're starting a party, and um, I'd like to have a discussion in a constructive way yeah. of where they're going. Now, would 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 it have had the same effect if you watched on New Year's Eve on television? We're all in this together, firework. Let's unite as a nation. 
no, it wouldn't work because someone would turn around and go, that doesn't represent me. Mm. That doesn't, that doesn't, you're not talking about me. You're talking about you. I'm, I'm being left out. I, I, I want to be it, represented. It, I, and, and what it is, it's come to a point now, especially um, with regards to presenters, with regards to people on television, that they're scared, that they don't want to be cancelled. No, they, they will question think. it because they're f thinking about career. I don't blame them. Um, but you get very few people that will come out and talk about it and say, no, this is wrong. Um, you need to take note of them people because at least they've got the courage to come out and say. Mm. Um, Look that, at Lenny that, Henry. That, that, Lenny Henry. I mean, Le Les Ferdinand people have come out. Um, and John Barnes as well. Even Morgan Freeman in, you know, um, very powerful um, actor. And ex-prisoner, ex-convict. Sorry, that's Shawshank. <laughs> um, he, and the best narrator of any film in yeah, history. He could, re he could fucking narrate someone. I'm pretty sure thing. he could um, He could just talk to me and like, I'd just I fall for him. Yeah, if, if I was sitting on the end of, edge of my bed hunched over masturbating, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable <laughs> oh, with God. him sitting next to me narrating it because it would be quite special. But all joking aside, <laughs> you're talking about like celebrities and channels that do have to cater into that um, that new box that we're in now where... If something happens, right, we're the BBC, we have to make sure that we're on board with this and say, yep, we don't, we, we support this, we don't support that. I, I said it on another show that, let's forget the fact that they're housing known paedophiles for over 40 years at the BBC. Mm. But it's that, um, it's that thing now of you have to be, you have to be with it. Or again, it's that back to that COVID thing of, oh, I don't really like that. Well, you're a Nazi. You're mm. a Nazi. Mm. Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. Mm. Well, no, I, I just want I, to know a bit more about I, it. I think it's a liberal, It's this liberal movement, toxic movement. There's nothing wrong with liberalism and there's nothing wrong with the society we live in. But what it's done, and as I said before, it's allowed these extremists on that side yeah. to, to, to come up with these silly... Um, I mean, it, we're going into a complex issue now, but let's just take sexes and I'm gender non-binary and I'm this and I'm that now and you can't tell me what I can't be and uh, it's got so confusing. But it's allowed this sort of, cr this this toxic environment as if you was to, to question it, you would be cancelled or you would be a sexist, you would be a you know, I'm misogynist, you're, you're this, you're that, you're, and, and it's just, well, no, it's just, I just want a boy or a girl. It's that conspiracy theory yeah. attitude, isn't it? Like, I don't understand being a boy. Exactly. I, I just think, and again, it's these, it's allowing, and, and, and I'll just get into a point. I'll make a demonstration. Let's just say Brexit voters. And it's a common thing. Um, that they they will often say it, and, and often the left will, will would say it to the 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 Brexit voters. Will I would say, well, mid north up north were actually uh, Labour voters that voted for Brexit, and it was often a Labour movement. But it come out that every Brexit voter was ill educated. A study was done. There's always a study. A study was done that the vast majority of Brexit voters didn't go to university. They're ill-educated. Um, and I think that is, again, what you're doing is you're allowing people to say that, that you're saying that people are thick because they don't agree with what you're yeah. saying. Because they voted against what you wanted to vote, you're, cast, you're saying that they're thick. There's always one study, but wait, what it is, is that these people need to be called out and say, well, how dare you say that? The vast majority of this country are thick just because they didn't go to university. That's bollocks. That's absolutely bollocks. You're not intelligent uh, just because you go to uni university. No. Most, ultra, you know, you've got several entrepreneurs that just come from nothing. And, and uh, yeah, people that have got good uh, degrees in, in uh, doctorates and engineering and professors, yeah. But a lot of degrees ain't worth a carrot. No. So, that you, you know, it's just, it's, it, I hate that generalising. But it's that demonstration of that movement to say, well, no, hold on, you're generalising people there. Show me the study of what you're saying. And what it does is these things evolves. It evolves. And it, uh, in regards to... 
the, 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 the toxic environments that we're living in now. You know, can't question certain narratives no. because the extremists on that side are having an opinion and it's not being challenged. It's getting worse mm. and, and, and it evolves and evolves. And they go, oh, okay, well, well, what about this then? What about that? What about fucking um, uh, men that dress as women and can go into a woman's yeah. changing room? Like, what? But, I, you know, I, 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 I don't understand... The, the, some of the society we're living in now, and I'm 34 years old, still relatively young. So, le <laughs> so let's say, for example, then, um, Lenny Henry comes out and says, look, which he did, and said, look, we're not going to have no more white saviours for comic relief, okay? Oh. And then you go, okay, then that's fine. Okay, no more white saviours. So does then, so that means then, can I perceive that as, well, that's a bit racist. That's a bit of a racist comment because you've used a... You've used me as a white person to say, I don't want any of you getting in uh, getting involved with comic relief. We don't need it for them to go out to Africa and go, look, I'm a, I'm a rich white person and I'm here with a load of um, poor people. Mm. I, all right, I can get it. I can get it to that respect of where the only reason there are white celebrities and any celebrity in comic relief is because they've either got a new album out or they've got a film coming out in the summer. No one does it out of the goodness yeah, of I heart. Charity, it's self-promotion. I think, yeah. They got Bono. But that's incredibly, <laughs> give us your fucking money. But a comment like that, I, I was quite surprised. I was like, wow, that could be taken as quite racist. That could be taken as quite racist to say, look, we don't want any more white saviors. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen it, so I can't no, comment on but, it. But then if... <laughs> I understand what you're saying. It is general... Uh, I just say, I just think we're a bit mixed up now. I just I just I just don't. I but would this all happen without COVID? Would you be able to get away with the stuff that we're seeing now without COVID? Yeah, I think you would. Do you really think yeah, so? Yeah, I just think, I think we've just been bashed. And I just bashed. Society, I just think it's just society we live in. But it, there's a happy medium to everything, um, uh, and it just seems that the right the 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 right and the left. Uh, um, especially the left, and I would say I'm a more centralist type of person now. Uh, it seems to have got very extreme, very extreme. On what side? The left. The left side. The left side. I think it's got very extreme. We've got to a point where there's justification in uh, defacing Winston Churchill's statue to say that over you know, pollution, <laughs> over, um, that he was a racist, and people don't see him that way. And in fact, he he was the leader against the most. Uh, the, the the biggest fascist racist regime mm. that's ever graced this this earth that wanted to actually kill mm. uh, everyone and and turn them into and 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 put a new race of Nazis uh, throughout Europe. That's what Hitler wanted to implement. Absolutely. Didn't it? And and he he was the the person that fought against that. And and yet. But there are some things that he has said in the past. Yes, we go, mm, but it's a bit borderline. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. But you need to remember that the, the era that he was living. Of course, in. it's a different time. It's a different time. You can't be judged on a modern a modern society compared no. to that society that they lived in. There, it was Absolutely. predominantly white. There wasn't any um, uh, any um, ethnic minorities in the population. No. There wasn't anything like that. People weren't adjusted to the to the way we are now, um, and. Uh, and and you can't judge someone upon like that. And if they're outright racist and saying, "Oh, well, yeah, well, you know, I don't like anyone with different skin color," that's but you know, it's clear mm. racism. But um, it, again, it, it, it's just. But then why do we have? To, why are we in an age now where we have to keep looking back to judge people and society in the present? Mm. If that if that was broad, it, everyone keeps saying, "Oh, it's it's this and it's there's a lot of slavery stuff going around." Here. And yes, it did happen. Yes, it's horrible. But to bring that now and, and still hold a country accountable for it, mm. let's not talk to Germany again then. Because yeah. from 1939 to 1945, yeah, we were fighting them because they were gassing and murdering Jews. Let's not talk to them ever Jews, again. Jews, gypsies, they exactly. killed 7 million of them in a exactly. so let's, mass genocide. So by history, let's judge them now on what they did in history and never have anything to do with them again. It's ridiculous. That's and the Italians, point. exactly the same. The Italians sided with the Nazis in the Second World War. Let's not talk to the Italians anymore. Let's not talk to the Chinese. Let's not talk to anyone. Because every Every country is guilty of something, but it doesn't mean that you should have to carry that on your soldiers' uh, shoulders from generations to generations to come and have that as a responsibility to say, yep, yeah, I've got to hold my hands up. 150 years ago, my ancestors were responsible for that. I must pay the price now. 
ridiculous absolutely ridiculous you don't read a book backwards you read it forward and the only way that you learn and improve on yourself is by looking forward and changing it not keep going back and going oh look we did this you suffer for that mm. and it's ridiculous and and I, it is going to get worse and worse and worse and i think it's going to affect us more because as, as you were saying earlier the mental health uh, state that we're in now as a country is it is an all-time low it's suicides and stuff is that they should be on the news and they should be held accountable to say, look, this is a this is a non-related COVID death but calls through COVID. Mm. Because it is. Mental health, yeah. Um, I think we'll start seeing more studies into it. But no, that's a good point that you made there. I think it's a very good point um, that we need to, 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 to try and move forward rather than trying to, to look through the history books. I mean... I we'll, could... look for, we'll look back at COVID in 100 years' time and not learn a fucking thing. Nothing. I think that, yeah. because it will happen again and it will happen again and it will happen again because you've seen it even if you are a voter that trusts the government or a non-voter that doesn't trust the government you must sit back there and go fucking hell they've made a pig's ear of this mm. this is a total balls up yeah no I agree I agree and you know I, I, I just think it is uh, it's got to that point now but what are <laughs> I think we've done enough um, talking about sort of COVID and politicising uh, certain things, politics and how divided everything it is. Let's turn the tables. What are your New Year's resolutions? <laughs> to watch less telly. <laughs> Why is it? Everyone, again, like this this whole thing is making people watch more telly. It's making people more mental health, uh, more mentally weak, more dependent, more financially weak. Um, this whole situation is going to make people more dependent yeah. on the state. Just a quick one before we lighten it up a little bit is that if a government has a responsibility to tell you to wear a mask when you go out, surely then the government should have exactly the same responsibility to pay for an advert that says, go out and exercise. Yeah. Go out and keep yourself yeah, yeah, fit. Yeah, Ride yeah, a yeah. fucking bike. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. Don't just sit on your ass and watch us yeah, fucking, yeah. fucking spout shit or watching crappy standards or whatever. 100%. They've got a duty to tell their people to say, go out and exercise and keep yourself safe and keep yourself healthy. Yeah. Don't be sitting there eating fast food, getting massive and fat and unhealthy. Yeah. While you're depressed, you eat more, you eat more shit and food, yeah. which then increases your mental health capacity and brings mm. it down. They have a duty to know that because they've got advisors to say, look, this is what's going to happen here. Mm. People are mm. down, they're going to eat worse food. That's part of the secret dossier was to uh, that the government have was the damage uh, to um, to the to people to the economy that these lockdowns are having. And mental health is 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 one of them, the big ones of it. I know it's damaged as I said before. It's uh, had an effect on me um, and and anyone, um, especially. And I feel sorry for those people. I really do. Uh, and and it's got to such a, a point now where i think that we're we're reaching um uh, certain places where there's a point of no return you know and, uh, not with people but with economy i just yeah. think so whole industries are going to be wiped out automotive i think you know uh, the um the arts industry uh, it's just not but again going back to you're, you're right all them things have been taken away which then have an adverse effect on us but at least when you look at these chi uh, these countries like china uh and all them uh, around that area that will have a daily exercising regime before they go to work. Regardless of COVID, it's always been there. You take part if you want to take part, but mm. publicise it. Don't put it all on Joe Wicks's shoulders. That's, <laughs> that's not fair. Why, why shouldn't a government turn around and go, look, we're going to put, instead of in loose women, and yeah. you can hear fucking Eamon Holmes and his wife chatting shit about what happens he if you chuck out. a lemon at a light switch. <laughs> Joe Wicks come out, didn't he, and said that you were suffering... Fair play to me, says I'm suffering with all this, and then uh, he, 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 you know, and, and even someone like him that's just because he's done well at it, haven't he? Had a result. Well, I think he's done well. At full stop, isn't it? He? he started off on Instagram, leaning 15. I think mean, he's done really well. Joe Don't Wicks. force me to exercise, Wicks. <laughs> all right, leaning 15. I think mean, he's done really well. I like, I like him. I like. I, I think his meals are really good as well. His meals? Well, he got food. Well, Lean in 15, he, he started off on Instagram doing meals is. and he would make fifth meals and he'd call it Lean in 15 and basically predominantly high fat meals um, with a little carbohydrate. <gasps> and uh, 
he, he just quick and easy, like throw Uncle Ben's in there, we just throw a, like an avocado, like chicken breast, or make some, and makes really interesting stuff, but it's healthy, reasonably healthy. Mm. And then combine that with exercise, people will be losing weight. And uh, That's another thing as well, isn't it? Is, is that you do have those programs on um, that will say, oh, look, I'm James Martin. Come and cook a lunch with me in my kitchen. First of all, we're going to get this eight pound of venison out of the freezer. <laughs> yeah. you take Half a pound of butter. Twelve avocados at two pound fifty a shot. Oh, right, uh, expensive. And then you go, yeah, that's a really good way of eating healthy. Yeah. If I was earning forty grand a year, right. I I it's I d there's a lot of people that are, that under lockdown that are having to rely on a on a income that's obviously implemented on them that haven't got a choice in to then be watching telly on the weekend and going, oh yeah, look. I'm in the middle of Spain here. I'm on a beach. What you do is you get this big steak the size of a leg there and you whack it on there. And you're like, come on, mate. This is costing like £40 a lunch. Yeah. I mean, but again, it's people like to watch the uh, the cooking programs because it's sort of luxurious and watching people cook. I like James Martin's stuff. But again, uh, Joe... He don't eat healthy, does he? No, he puts like half a pup tub of butter in stuff, which uh, but it, it looks nice and tastes nice. Um, but <laughs> Joe Wicks is just cheap. No cheapest chip sort of doesn't really uh, no no expense uh, really expensive stuff just really plain and that's why I think he's taken off he's obviously he's uh, the only one doing it very very likable uh, likable character very energetic and uh, full of charisma which is uh, he's in great shape and uh, good looking chap too he's oh, got he's got all good Jeez. He's, he's married marry him. He's married, unfortunately. But yeah, he was the only one doing it, wasn't he? He was the only one that took think, it upon yeah, himself everyone, to do it. Yeah, everyone tried to jump on the bandwagon and uh, copy him. And But you would have thought an, an ex-mayor that invented the Boris bike would have told everyone to get on the in saddles yeah. and had a 40-minute uh, drive around. He lost loads of weight, didn't he, that idiot Boris? Yeah. He lost loads of weight. What, after he had, after he had, uh, after he had after COVID? After he had COVID because they said to him that you're... Uh, you're too big, old chap. Really? Yeah. Really? He did. So he lost weight he on lost his two own? Stone. On his own or because he was ill? He lost two stone because he suffered with COVID, didn't he? Mm. Um, and he, um, that prompted him, that was the catalyst for him to lo um, lose more weight. And he did. He lost loads. He lost loads. I think it's two or three stone he lost. But he was getting a health consultant in to give him a strict diet at the... Mm. Uh, the uh, expense of the taxpayers, probably. Again, probably making that up. But yeah. we've got... Hold on. We've got these <laughs> datas here <laughs> to show that Boris is a twat. <laughs> but to line up a bit, yeah, I, I think New Year is going to be no resolutions this year because I think it's going to be the same as last year. Mm. Um, I don't think... Um, I don't know, I've watched it. I, I, I'd, yeah, probably watch less telly this year because last year it was just nothing but sitting in front of your screen realising or wondering what's going to happen next or what can you do next. I'll tell you what, right? I watched a film on Netflix called Hereditary. Yeah, bullshit. What a shitty film that is. Starts off all right and it just ends fucking mental. I'm actually, honestly, I thought it was scary as fuck. Really? I, oh! It's about fucking devil worship and all that shit. Come I'm actually got him here. Mate. No, it's scaring me. Come on, mate. Oh, well, weird. Yeah, Anyone at home weird. likes a horror, watch Hereditary. Honestly, I just thought it was... Don't watch it because Joe said it's well weird. A dog and a monkey, I can have sex on a, on a lay-by the side of the road, is weird, but you wouldn't pull over and what? Well, maybe you would. Huh? But I'm saying Hereditary starts off brilliant. Yeah. It ends terribly. Hereditary is not good. weird. Midsummer's really good. Watch that. That's weird. That's really good. Yeah, I, and again, I've, I struggled to get in with things. I'm, I watched uh, more. I'll tell you what I did watch. I watched the narration of the um, well, like an audio book of uh, or listened um, of Bernard O'Mahony's version of the Essex Boys, Rise and Fall the Essex Boys, which was the Redden resident um, in the village in Essex with the Land Rover shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Colton Leach is coming on the show soon in February. And hopefully Bernard comes on too because he was a, one. He was involved with all of them and he, he interviews all the um, the, the villains and, and talks through the rise and fall of them basically and, and how it was brilliant. Uh, really yeah. good. So I recommend that on YouTube, by the way. But um, The Rise and Fall of Essex Bird, Bernard O'Mahony, I thought it was really, really good. I, I listen to that every night before I go to bed. Um, but you know we got to wrap it up, Moose. 
Ah, oh, it went quick, didn't it? It did went well quick. Went well quick. Um, but but yeah, thank you very much for listening in and tune in to the next show where we're not going to be talking about COVID. Yeah, hopefully. Well, hopefully, I've got uh, we've got some good guests lined up. Uh, got some good journalists coming on. Um, and as I say, um, I've spoken to David Ike. Um, hopefully. Um, we've got to work something out um, and to, to get him on the show next and talk about COVID. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for listening in. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.